Thank you so much, uh, Professor Faridi, for inviting me this evening. Thank you so much for the whole team for inviting me to speak at your event. The subject of this evening, Why Borders Matter, takes on a very special meaning in the light of the current events. Hamas, four days ago, sent its soldiers into Israeli territory to commit atrocious attacks and terrorist assault against the Israeli population and other Westerners. The horrific news that continues coming out of Israel these past days is a cruel reminder that without borders, which are physical but also moral limits, civilization ceases to exist. Without limits, without borders, there is lawless chaos and savage barbarism. Radical Islam has yet again shown the world that it will never respect either physical nor moral borders in the quest for the Ummah, a global Islamic state. My heart goes out to the people of Israel. As an EU parliamentarian, I'm here today and I'm very glad to, so that I can share with you my thoughts on the history of EU borders, their importance, their con the consequences of their dismantlement, and, well, where we go from here. While bordering has existed over for millennia, how borders are conceived today and operated has changed considerably over time. Our present system is only 350 years old, a product of peace treaties drawn up after decades of European religious war. The Peace of Westphalia, signed in 1648, ended 30 and 80 year wars and created the framework for modern international relations. The concepts of state sovereignty, mediation between nations, diplomacy, find their origins in the text of this treaty that is well over 300 years old. Because of the Treaty of Westphalia, let's remember that the Netherlands gained independence from Swain, Spain, Sweden gained control of the Baltic, and France was acknowledged as a preeminent Western power. The power of the Holy Roman Empire was broken and the German states were yet able again to determine the religions of their lands. Borders are as such of essence to the stability and peace between nation states because they define the legitimate territory in which a group of people have agreed on how they organize their society. Opposite these homogeneous populations and orderly defined borders of nation states, we have the heterogeneous populations and the fluctuant limits of empires. An empire, which I would resume as an extensive group, we have the example of uh, Hamas or Hezbollah, of states or countries ruled over by a single ruler or oligarchy, which we will come back to as I will talk about the EU. This heterogeneous supranational entity is centrally governed by a superior authority and is based on domination and power to exercise its domination on the people. It could be argued that there are two types of empires. The empire with unlimited appetite to expand, to push its borders as far as possible, to encompass new territories and submit new peoples to the centralized government and the other is the kind of empire which is so vast that it is just preoccupied by maintaining stability within its borders well regardless of the model of empire borders are not their borders are not the natural limits of a population who have decided to make society together on a given territory their borders are artificially defined and compass different populations and this requires superior centralized authority to exercise control. Dismantling borders to dismantle national, national sovereignty. Well, it cannot be denied that the EU evolved firstly from an international organization, that is a space of cooperation between nation states, to a federal type of organization, but subsequently abandoned the notion of union and started a process of unification. By signing the Schengen Agreement on the 14th of June 1985, Belgium, Germany, France, Luxembourg and the Netherlands agreed to gradually remove controls at their internal borders and to introduce freedom of movement for all nationals and goods of the signatory countries, other EU member states and some other non-EU countries. Today, the EU has become an empire, a neoliberal post-national organization built around the no-border concept run by, a power, by powerful EU institutions with most dis disputable legi legitimacy and decisions made by a centralized authority, the Commission. The EU has its own anthem, the Ode to Joy. It has its own currency, the Euro. It has embassies. I just learned there were 146. Its own diplomatic force. And it refers to its inhabitants of national, na nation states as European citizens, thus really ticking all the boxes that define the concept of an empire. In addition, the EU empire continues to expand. And let's take the following examples. 
geographically by inviting new member states to join. First in line, Albania, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Moldavia, and go on, and even Turkey and Ukraine. Economically, by signing free trade agreements with countries on the other side of the globe, effecti effectively tying them to the eco economically to the European empire. And we can cite here the free trade agreements with Latin America, the Mercosur. Also, they are tying, uh, they're expanding legally by transferring more and more national competences to EU level. And an eloquent example of this is, for example, the competence of the migration policy, for which nation states have very little to say and has es essentially been transferred to the EU. And this they can do by imposing supranational courts over national jurisdictions. And there is one less admittable way they expand, that's by using coercion and financial blackmail to bring recalcitrant countries and governments back into line. What are the consequences of this post-national EU empire on the citizens of the EU member states? Well, human beings are social beings that need a sense of belonging and that are naturally attached to their family, their community and their country. In addition, European civilization is rooted in Christian values. The EU empire has consciously dismantled these. Their efforts have gone into making families redundant, people interchangeable, communities outdated, and countries obsolete. And well, if we need to mention God, they consider it as a concept of previous centuries. Now, I gather that if you, I think that if you deprive people of those things in their lives that are bigger than themselves, family, country, and God, you morally disarm them. If you are deprived of belonging, why accept any sacrifice? Why fight, risk pain or death? And if you have lost your faith, what does it do to your moral standards and your sense of continuity? In France, we are a witness every day to the devastating effects of the so-called progressive ideologies and post-national EU policies. Mass migration, rising crime rates, declining birth rates, soaring energy prices, declining public services, gender issues, plummeting school levels, and the pauperization of our general population. But that's a topic in itself. So um, if we want to take back our control and the control from the oligarchy in Brussels and the neoliberal empire, we need to arm our people and most of all our young people with the strength they need to take charge of their future. And we must start by giving our people back their sense of belonging. The level at which we can act as politicians and decision makers, and because I'm a French politician, I need to express myself as being very attached to a secular model. And because I'm not the family of all people looking to belong somewhere, I'm not, I, I need, to, uh, need to know where I, can, why, where I can act. It is our work to give them back within our possibilities and our duty to give them back their countries which the EU stole from them. I would just like to make a slight comment on this because it's really amazing to see the tens of thousands of Israelis living overseas, traveling back at the moment to Israel since the attacks. Their sense of belonging is apparently very strong and their sense of sacrifice for the country has remained. I close uh, this, sort, this short intermittence. No borders, I think, are one of the main reasons of our dislocated societies. Reinstating borders are the beginning of the answer to start rebuilding our nation states. A defined territory, a home country, defined by borders, the country where we belong, the country that will look after us, the safe haven from which we can start rebuilding the lives of our people and the future generations in Europe. I invite you all to rehabilitate borders and work together towards building the alliance of the sovereign nations. Thank you very much.